Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on with our landscape uh, material exploration. Um, just following on from last week's video where we had a look at the different blend layers, uh, the difference between alpha blending, uh, weight blending and height map blending. Obviously for materials uh, a lot of landscapes you can just use the default setup, uh, it works really well, but if you do want a bit more control over sort of your height map and how those blend together, um, that's what we're going to be having a look at today. But before we start with that, there's a couple of other little features to landscapes that I just want to highlight. Um, firstly, this uh, painting out holes in or visibility. So we have here a, uh, a node landscape visibility mask, um, works basically the same as uh, any other Alfred material so you just set the blend mode down here to be masked uh, and all I've done I'm using the same kind of uh, the weight blending from last week blending my three layers together and then I want to have the the layer visibility mask or the landscape visibility mask affect all three of layers it doesn't want to only be on stone for example so all I'm doing doing all the layer blending first and then I've broken them up and I'm just multiplying the uh, the landscape visibility mask by the uh, opacity mask that was coming in. Not that there are any opacity masks in here, um, but you want to kind of future proof your materials in case something changes there. Same with all these other connections. I'm not using emissive colour, but it makes sense to have that connection just in case. Um, multiplying it in and then applied. So um, all we then have to do, if we go to our landscape painting in Sculpt, there is a visibility layer um, and then you can paint on or off your visibility um, as so, which is it's pretty handy if you want to make sort of caves or holes in things, um, you can obviously do that uh, this way. Um, there is a uh, slightly more advanced way of doing this, so this uh, this landscape hole here, um, the ability to have the masked material, it's more expensive uh, to be able to paint those holes out, so um, what Unreal have done for you, they've created this second material slot here, landscape hole material. Uh, and if we apply that, it'll only use the hole material where the material or where the holes have been painted. So if I just jump into the render complexity, you can see here hopefully the sort of the squares. So the more uh, the more textures and the more calculations each shader is doing, the the different colours, um, and you can see the landscape system only loads in uh, as much as it needs to. So uh, these centre ones here that have the holes painted in them, it'll pick those up and put that in there um, because we're using the whole material and this one the basic landscape material I could put back to being let's try the landscape weight that should be fine it's going to be compiled and now this is a cheaper material around the outside uh, and the expensive cost of using the the hole is there in the middle so um, up to you how you want to sort of set those up um, there's a little optimization to be made there so um, another feature of the landscapes be very helpful um, is this one the grass material so um, I've set up a material here which is loading grass meshes onto grasses we'll get in that in a second but just you can see here this grass is coming from the whole material so this one doesn't have the grass on it so you can see here these these squares have the, the whole um, but how do we do grass well so far what we've been doing is using the layer blend and that node and that's been blending everything together and that's been reading the information from our sort of painted height info but we can just sample layers independently a um, bit of a watcher here on uh, terminology so we can go in and do landscape sample and then you type in a name and you give it a name for whatever ma matches your layer info and it does uh, it doesn't matter which name you use get it right um, but then we can plug in this output node so we can create a new output node and it's actually just called a grass output. So um, the getting over there, get that. Um, the grass node it's set up a bit like a foliage painting. Um, so it's going to dynamically create foliage uh, or meshes, um, quite often used for things like grass, uh, where we've painted on the material. So if you wanted to have little sticks, stones, anything like that, where you can be a lot of small meshes randomly placed, um, we can do that via the grass system and in this case I'm sampling grass and I'm plugging that into my grass layer so um, you can have lots of different grass types uh, if I wanted to have um, say like stones I could do stones, let's just do that, let's get rid of this one um, and then I could sample sample landscape layer sample, sample stone 
and then put that into there. Um, and now I'm going to have whatever I've set it to be in. Whether I paint grass, I'm going to get the grass output here, and whether I paint stone, I'm going to get the grass output here. Uh, and I can just create a new landscape grass type, save it in my landscape materials, call it. Uh, what did I call the other one? Mm -hmm. well, stones, grass. And if I just open that up, we can set here what varieties we want. So here we can just tell it what mesh to use. I'm just going to use little cubes, something like that. Um, size and scale, scatter. Um, let's have a little bit of reduced size. I'm not going to go into all the settings here. You can; they should be pretty self-explanatory if you've used any of the foliage painting. It's all the same kind of uh, of settings. Um, now, I did say I wasn't going to compile anything today, but if we're going to add this on, hopefully this isn't going to be too expensive to compile, cause any problems with the video capture. Um, we'll just give it a second. Hopefully what we're going to see now is where we've painted the stone meshes on the terrain. We're going to have little cubes. Um, looks like that has worked. And there we go. So we can see these little cubes have come in. Um, and we've not done any manual placement of those, not painted those. We're just driving all that through the landscape layer system. Uh, and if I go in here and paint, if I paint the stone layer, as you paint more of that, obviously there's a little pause in the update, and there we get the little cubes. And the same, I can kind of erase out my grass and we'll get rid of the grass layer as well and get rid of those. So really powerful system for building kind of um, objects into your terrain. Um, little foliage things. I wouldn't advise trying to use it for anything too big. Things like trees, um, you probably want more control over the larger foliage pieces but anything that's small, small bits of grass, little stones, rocks, all that kind of like debris on the floor. Really nice powerful system. So. Cool, so moving on with some more advanced landscape material stuff. Uh, hopefully, well, we, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sampling our layers independently. So rather than here, we're using the layer blend. We can see down here we're using it for the for the grass. We can just sample that. Um, and so, for example, here I've just got this red and green landscape. Um, two layers, obviously stone and grass. But actually, all I'm doing is directly sampling those uh, and then rendering them. So here I'm suspending the two together, so stone is red, grass is green. Uh, and there's no colour information or anything here, this is just showing those masks directly. But because of that, because we could use the masks directly, what we can do is then go in uh, and build our, our shader however however we like, because we're getting access to that data. So um, if you watched the video a couple of weeks ago about vertex painting and advanced vertex painting, uh, we're basically going to do the exact same setup uh, using the height map uh, and the noise. So here I have just a single blend between um, stone and, and mud. Um, and this is not weight blended, this is using that alpha blend. So all I'm doing here is I'm painting the amount of stone that I want and then sort of erasing it out um, using the, the, the paintbrush tool on the layer. And we'll see why we're doing it with the non-alpha blended uh, in a minute. But in terms of setup, um, we just open this up. So I'll just clean this up slightly. So here we have that mud material. Um, just simple RGB, uh, colour, normal, and then the extra detail, roughness, etc. Uh, Intermaterial attributes, same here for stone. Uh, and like I say, this is very similar to the uh, vertex painting video we, we had the uh, couple of weeks ago. So um, if any of this is a little bit confusing, go back and watch that video. Um, and then here, rather than sampling the vertex colours, as we did then, um, vertex colours, find the right note, um, you are using uh, these layer samples, so we're just going in using the landscape layer instead of the um, the vertex colour, but we're doing the same process, so we're taking the grayscale values here and adding a noise, help break up those those uh, those edges, um, and then using a height lerp, so we're plugging in our height values, our height texture, so the height map that makes the most sense to use between the mud and the stone I think is the stone one, that's the one that's going to give us the most um, sort of realistic result and now we should be able to go in and paint inside um, like so the mud is between the cracks in the stone and we've got all those controls now so we've got a bit of noise that we can add and we've got a control of the contrast and if I just play with a few of these values so you can see the results that they're having um, 
obviously don't want to go to a negative value, it's just going to inverse everything. So now we've got quite a soft fall off and there's a bit coming through the sort of getting these sort of soft alpha reblends between things, maybe that's not what we want. If we go up for a really high value, there's already quite a lot of contrast in this um in this height map. Uh but we can see we're getting kind of that sort of broken up edge that's coming from the noise. If I change the tiling on that. There we are, we can affect affect that. We can maybe change the contrast on the noise. Whatever we want to do. So now we've got the sort of full control that we had before. Um, but we're still using the sampled layer um, and actually if I just say let's say I never actually want to be able to see this sort of green background where it's like slightly um, yeah grassy background to the stone texture I could add an offset to my height and there we are we able to paint those stones without actually ever be able to paint uh, into the um, the full height map to get to the the background of the height of the stone texture so um, yeah, really nice. Really, sort of, we've built our own system um, from the sort of the layers using the landscape layers, uh, and this lets us going to be able, well, it's going to let us be able to paint as many layers as we want, um, which obviously the vertex colors sort of struggles with because we're limited to the number of vertex colors. So, right, sorry about that. Just had to edit out some background noise. So, where were we? Yes, looking at the blends. Um, so here we're blending the. Um, the mud and the stone together using the stones height map works really nicely, no problem. Um, moving on to adding a grass layer, well this is all working quite nicely. Um, I've used, let me open this up, there we are. Um, so I've got my mud layer uh, and then I'm using the height map from the stone uh, and I'm doing exactly the same thing and just doing the grass layer here and I'm using the same height map. So. I, feel like the, uh, the the transition between these layers is most driven by the um, the stones height map getting the grass in between the cracks again uh, I have had to invert it so it's one thing to notice um, because obviously we want the sort of the grass to appear in between the um, the layers now um, uh, and that works it works quite nicely uh, if I paint some grass here on top of the stone you can see it's appearing in the cracks exactly as I like. Um, got all the same controls as we had before. Um, one problem though, if I start painting my grass over here on the mud, um, you can see it's still using that height map. So obviously with Unreal's uh, sort of weight blended height map system, uh, it knows which two layers are next to each other, it knows how to blend them together. Uh, we haven't built that into our system, so we're gonna have to kind of like make some changes here. So here we're having, it's a bit more like the alpha blend uh, example from last week, so we're we're kind of controlling which layers go on top of each other. Um, so if I go in, for example, here, I can't paint the stone back on top of the grass um, because they're sort of layered in that way. But that's kind of what you want. I mean, most terrain um, ground materials do have a, sort of a logic to them, um, and you can always erase the grass. Um, so it's not no difference in functionality, just a difference in kind of workflow, but uh, we are going to have to fix this problem over here. So um, so here we have, uh, and how did I do it? Well, um, I've mentioned before, um, there's a little sneaky technique I like to use here. So I'm plugging the height map into the world displacement input of this make material attribute. So what I need is the resultant height map of the two sort of uh, materials blended together um, but that's happening in the blend anyway so if I plug the height map here into world displacement plug the height map here which is in the alpha channel into world displacement then this blend material attributes together is actually going to do that for me um, and I've got a, a, set of, uh, a quick preview command here so if I turn this to one here we can see we can see that blended height map so now I've got mud uh, and the stones blended together already and then that's, that's the height map I can then use for my grass um, and again I'm going to have to invert it. Uh, technically I should maybe only be inverting the, um, the stones um, but I mean the height map of the grass or the mud sorry is, is quite noisy anyway so the invert's probably fine so so you do have to do a little bit of thinking in how you're going to control your, um, your height maps and how you're going to blend them together but once that's done now when I paint the grass, if it's painted on the stone, it's picking up the stone. If it's painted on the mud, it's just going to be ignoring that directly onto the mud. Uh, and we don't get that same error as we were getting before. Um, and again, we now have full control over all of our height map information. Um, can change the contrast of noise. 
settings like this uh, make it much higher, much lower change that, that transition uh, and we're adding noise in to our transition areas as well so um, helping to break up that sort of um, grey semi soft transparency um, transition between between areas um, which works quite nicely so um, yeah quite a nice system I think um, obviously the more complexity you add the more we're gonna have to kind of like think about how the layers are, are combining but remember there is a cost to these things so if you want sort of mud stone grass maybe I don't know something like snow or something on top of this um, you're probably going to want to stop at that that kind of limit. You aren't going to want 16 or 20 or 50 different materials all on the same um, little terrain square on the same section. Um, and we can always go in and sort of build two different ones. So here it would be mudstone grass, have that in one area. Then you could have sort of mud snow, uh, mudstone snow is the second one. And then you're sort of picking between those in that area. So it can all be in one big material, but wherever you've painted it within a section, that's going to be limited to what's available in that section and there is actually um, a setting here for that max painted layers per component so if you set that to I don't know something like four um, you wouldn't be able to paint extra complexity and extra cost in there um, and so one last technique for this kind of system um, obviously we're painting our, our layers kind of independently and we're, we're choosing how they're being used um, but there's nothing stopping us adding another one kind of um, at the end, so here, exact same setup as I had before, blending the two first two layers together, mud and stone using the stone height map, and then grass on top using the resultant height map, um, and then in the same way I did with um, the transparency and then the sort of layer masking, I can just blend this out, and I've just created another sample layer here, I've called this one puddles, uh, and I can paint that on top, and because we're using the alpha blend and not the weight blend, they're all independent of each other, every single one of those could be set to one, um, but it's just sort of multiplying here, so I'm darkening it, making it slightly uh, smoother, uh, and flattening the normal so to look kind of like a, a wet puddle. And if I catch the highlight of the sky in there, you can see you get quite a nice result, and it doesn't care what's underneath. So the three layers that are underneath the stone, I can paint that away. It doesn't change the puddle at all. So I'm not had to make a kind of a wet mud and a wet stone and a wet grass. I can kind of just have that as an additive layer on top. And you could use this for all sorts. So you could create like a dirt layer. Um, in the original question, there was a, a question about breaking up tiling. Well, you can see here in the mud, maybe it's quite tiled. You can see that same repeats. But if you just add a little bit, oh, make it a puddles, a little bit of puddle here and there. seems to frozen uh, you can kind of very easily just kind of add a lot of variation and you could do the same with like I say some noise create some dirt all that kind of stuff and it's all completely sort of paint in in your layers um, depending on how you've built your your material so um, it's been a little bit laggy with the video capture so so yeah so that's there's sort of a, a more advanced material um, it's the uh, advantages I find of the alpha blend uh, each layer is independent but rather than having the sort of default layer system the default layer blend that Unreal wants I've gone in and um, kind of built my own um, using the sort of height information and adding noise and we're getting some quite nice results I think between between the different layers so um, next week I think we're going to do some more landscape uh, material stuff maybe try and build up how to sort of automatically have some layers work for us so we don't have to paint everywhere um, but uh, yeah hopefully that's that's helpful uh, as always any questions comments etc let me know um, I say I do have a patreon if you want to support the channel um, and sort of ask some questions and provide um, some some input uh, yeah and if you have any questions do ask below or you send me an email uh, and I'll clarify anything um, that hasn't um, hasn't made sense so um, Cool. Hope that's been informative and I'll see you all next time.